This is history. 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 Made up as we go along. Bienvenidos a todos a uh, History Improved, where a history expert surprises us improvisers with a historical event that we then act out on the spot. I'm Steve Fate, along with Trent Edwards. And Trent, it's nice to be back in the studio where I belong. Yes, it's nice to have you back in your natural surroundings. It is. It's, it's not necessarily more attractive surroundings, but it's... No, you do miss the Minnesota chic. I do. I do. That paneling just really... It goes with my eyes. I had a crazy couple of weeks myself. I went on tour with Ghost Balloon Troop, and we went through Louisiana to Lafayette, New Orleans after a gig at the Coronation Theater in Houston. The crowds were really good, and the theaters in New Orleans and in Lafayette were great. But we won't be talking about what happened on the tour bus, right? No. Okay. There's no talk about that. Yeah, okay. That's what I figured. Well, very cool. Nice. I didn't, I don't even remember having a tour bus. It was so crazy. Oh, so <laughs> successful tour. Nice. <laughs> yes. So if you didn't uh, get the hint from my greeting there, we're going to be going overseas to deal with a, uh, a vast topic. We had a little, uh, we had some fun with a new improviser too. Yes, Sarah Brown Rankin. That was a wonderful get, of course. Uh, I've known her for a couple of years. First through the Sketch Super Collider show she produces with Dan Fisher. And since then, I've gotten to enjoy watching her and her troupe, HodgePodge AF, performing the Herald. Nice. And our returning history expert is none other than Matt Roberto, Who's, I believe he's filing for tenure at this point. Exactly. He's, a, he's associate, if not fully professor at this point in history and improved. Mm -hmm. So he's back and gave us the, uh, the topic we're going to be talking about uh, that you'll be hearing very shortly. Sin mas preambulos, oyente disfruta. Totally awesome. We are here with the... Sarah Brown Rankin, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me and using my new married name. Mm -hmm. I'm a newlywed. That's exciting. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Sarah. Trent. Are you ready to make history? I am ready to make history. I've been waiting for this moment my whole life. <laughs> I've been so ordinary, and here's my moment to make history. All right. Well, let's check the Wayback 3000 for what's in the hopper. Okay, our event, Defeat of the Spanish Armada, 1588. The major players are King Philip II, Queen Elizabeth I, Lord Charles Howard, and Sir Francis Drake. Dang it. I was really hoping that was Trafalgar. That's a couple hundred years off, I think. Mm, different <laughs> Spanish Armada. <laughs> Okay. The defeats. The Spanish Armada. In Shakespeare times. In Shakespearean times, yes. Okay. Okay. All, all my references are relative to Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Does that mean that we need to like rhyme everything then? <laughs> <laughs> we could try. <laughs> I could try and fail in about the first 10 seconds. I think Sarah would do better than us. I'm a that. terrible rhymer, actually. Yeah. But how confident are you, Steve, uh, in this era? In this um. Era? Oh, in this era. Uh, or just how confident are you in leading today? I can lead. Okay. You're feeling it. Let's go. Uh, and I believe we have Audrey on sound effects. There she is. We open on a throne room. The Spanish have insulted me for the last time. I am a legend now, and I will be a legend forever. And I cannot let this insult stand. Never, my queen. I will not let it stand either. I am your loyal subject. And also a very handsome lord, if we are admitting. Well, I won't disagree, but let's keep that between us behind the curtain. Anything for you, sire. Yes. Well, my point is that I cannot stand that the Spanish Armada 
is supposedly the best in the world. I mean, we're Britain. We're the best at everything. Of course. This cannot stand. It will not stand. We will smite them on the ocean. I have a plan. It's coming to me now. My God, you look handsome right now. Thank you. See me behind the curtain. Oh, oh yes, sir. Ah, that was wonderful. Uh, I really enjoyed your company behind the curtain, sire. Thank you so much for indulging me. <sighs> well, it's the least I can do, because you're going to defeat the Spanish Armada, right? Yes, I will, I shall. I shall smite them. My plan, if you of course allow it, sire, mm -hmm. is to take a mighty fleet of galleons. I hope we have galleons. My plan requires many galleons to go around the north side of Scotland and will pretend that we are going on an exploration, say, to Iceland or somewhere like that. But we'll really loop around. Ooh. Loop around and we'll come from the south, right into the, the Bay of Biscayne. This is very sneaky. But you know... I have a side thought from this plan. I think it's very modern of you that you call me sire instead of queen. I have all the power of a man, and I like being addressed as a man. I sort of like it. Excellent. <laughs> you are the most powerful queen Britain has had. Ever will. Ever will. And also, if I might add, the handsomest. Okay, go, go take care of the ar armada thing, because I'm going to have a crumpet or something. We cut to another throne room. Roberto, this queen in England is, uh, uh, she is a threat. The only woman role should be as a maiden, never a queen. That is for a man to control, to have power. Exactly. Like you. Exactly. Saya. Yes, that is why my name is Philip II. Yes. I, I want you to focus more the one. Philip! Don't worry about the second part. It sounds weak. You're not weak. You are brave and strong. So the, the chronology is not so important as the... Um, let, let me try it. I am... Philip! Huh? Yes, excellent. So nice. Okay, okay. Uh, and I will not stand for this uh, intrusion on our empire by this uh, red-haired uh, woman. Uh. No. We shall be victorious if we just muster our armada and bring it up to those cliffs of Dover. We just show them how many ships we have. That should be enough to scare them. Oh. Yes, I like this plan. Can you assemble them all? Maybe, maybe I can do it in um, a month. I think a month. I would need a good solid month. Okay. We cut to a dock. Please, oui, sir, I'm looking for some work. I don't care if I have to do international war crimes. I'm just here to work. Excellent. We have plenty of work for a good strong lad. Oh, thank goodness, and thank you for calling me strong, even though I've got the one leg. Hmm. That might be a problem, but we need workers, so... No, you see, my... my... my leg. <laughs> this... this accent's hard to keep up, sir, sometimes. Given with my malady over the tongue, <laughs> but my leg, my peg leg, you see, it doubles as a baton. Oh. You see? Yes, I can bash, bash fish on the head with it. I'm a, I'm a mighty good fisherman, sir. Excellent. You're a fishmonger type. I'm whatever you need me to be, as I said, international war crimes. International war crimes? If necessary, I will do so. For the flag, sir. Anything for England and for our great Queen Elizabeth. Lord Charles. Lord Charles. Lord Charles. Word is that we need someone who doesn't have scruples. Have you heard from anyone that could possibly uh, fill this role? 
Um, I see this young lad is um, with with the unfortunate. Uh, has uh, any qualifications uh, here? Your timing is exquisite. Yeah. His qualifications are excellent. Zero scruples. Zero scruples, sir. We'll do whatever I need to get a few coins to send back to my dear old mom, especially if it's in service of our great Queen Elizabeth. I've, I've also really enjoyed how sing-songy this young lad is. I've never seen someone with so much evil in them that is also just so adorable. Thank you for saying that, sir. Before I lost my leg, I was in the acting company with Mr. William Shakespeare, where I played Juliet. Oh, you're one of those acting types down at the Globe. Yes, of course. And as a young lad, of course, we played all the female roles. Of course. I was quite proud to play Juliet. But in a terrible theater accident, I lost my leg. What's your name, lad? Oh, my name is Jamie. Jamie? Jamie. Mm-hmm. You come from a good house? Oh, no, sir. No, no, sir. Good, good answer. Good answer. Oh. I was worried you might have some kind of people trying to uh, sway you to have some scruples. No, no. No, I'm low as they come. Just this little rotten scum willing to do whatever I can. Lord Charles, will you walk with me a moment? Lord Charles, we may need this, um, Jamie, to do some, uh... Something untoward. Some skullduggery. Some skullduggery, exactly. The queen would like us to uh, defeat the Spanish Armada. This is some, some, something Spanish just... Spanish Armada is so incredibly magnificent, though. That's a tall task. It should be a weekend job. A weekend job? Yes. This is the Spanish Armada, not the Spanish... Fishing club? But we are Britain! Ah, oh, yes. Wait, who will be leading this? If it's, if it's me, I might need... I might need some extra support, because... Well, I do have, uh... Well, the gout. And it's, uh... It's been weighing upon me, so, uh... It's not a matter of cowardice. Uh, just a matter of, uh... Very gouty feet. Lord Charles... Mm -hmm. I hear you um, have the ear of Sir Francis Drake. Yes, I do. He's a very courageous man, actually. I could put a word in. But don't you take the young lad who seems to be ready to perform certain acts? If you mean am I ready to impersonate a woman and do horrible things in the case for Britain... International terrible feats. Well, you're right, I am. You are, of course, very good at eavesdropping. Sorry, the the dock is quite small, and I just I got tired of clubbing fishes, and then I was listening to you. I'm sorry. All right. So, you will be coming on a special mission, Sir Francis Drake. Essential to the future of Britain as a naval power. He will bring our nation great pride if only you can convince him to attack the Spanish Armada with the few ships we have right now. Sir, do not worry. I will go to him in the beguiling disguise of the most beautiful maiden he's ever seen, and I will get him to lead this charge. I assure you, I can do it. Cut to a tavern. Sir, I couldn't help but notice that your your beer is empty. Actually, it is empty. Uh, yes, uh, I would uh, partake in some more uh, ale if you have any. Of course I do. <laughs> Here you are. Oh, no, I spilled some. Let oh. me clean that up for you. Oh, oh, oh. well, thank you. Oh, oh so you saw... You're so very handsome and noble, I don't know if I can control myself around you. But I must, because I am but a sweet, innocent maid. Well, uh, innocent maid? Well, it's unfortunate. Well, I don't know, but there is something about being on a boat that just makes me feel like a southern bill. <laughs> oh, that's very inviting. <laughs> yes, and, you know, this... 
something about being on a boat in the water just makes me feel so alive, you know? And you know what else would just make me feel so alive? What is that? If you would lead a charge against the Spanish Armada, wouldn't that just be something? The Spanish Armada, you say? Yes. Oh. That would take a, a lot of screwing up of my courage. I would need to... Oh, you just need to screw your courage to the stick in place. Yes. <laughs> you have a way with words, oh. lady. That, I feel a sudden inspiration to attack those rapscallions. Those damnable dogs. Those Spanish... Mm, with the right lady at my side, or at least in the cabin. <laughs> I feel like... Britain could make short work of that Spanish armada. Oh, and yes, we'll do it for Britain, but listen, now Britain, it's you. Ooh. You. You're the one that has the power to defeat them. You're the only one that can do it. You're just a great, big, brave, intelligent man. You're the only one who can do it. I just know it. Ooh, this is fantastic. Oh, Come on, come to my chambers. I will I will make a plan, and, and you can be there to enjoy it. Well, you can make the plan on the boat, can't you? Oh, yes, the boat. I just don't trust myself around you, so oh. we've got to be on the boat. We've got to be in international waters for the things we're going to do. Yes, let's make haste to the boat. The ship, I should say. <laughs> Cut to <laughs> the boat. Will it just be the two of you... Uh, for tonight. Y yes, I believe it'll be the just the two of us. Oh, uh, gosh. I, I, don't we need a whole battalion of soldiers or something to, to make this happen? Yes, of course, of course. Uh, my dear, I will, uh, I will procure them. Hey, uh, Sergeant at Arms. Yes, sir. Uh, could you, uh, go, uh, down to the, uh, docks and the pubs and gather up all the, uh, roughest characters you can find? And uh, drop a, a coin in their in their mugs, and uh, then they'll be part of the Royal Navy, and you can bring them back right straight away. Uh, we cut to the docks. All right, lad. You see that ship there? What say we go on a little um voyage? Why do I feel like I'm being voluntold to do something, huh? is my choice whether I want to go fight or not. Yeah, I don't want to fight neither. I don't want to fight at all. I, I just want to get some good ale. Would this coin be helpful? Oh, coin. Well, that coin is rather shiny. Could there be two coins? Two coins for each of you. <gasps> my God, I've never two seen coins. that much money together in my life, Fred. Me neither, Michael. We've got to get on that boat straight off. If this is what it means to be in the Navy, that I got two coins. I mean, not just one coin, two coins, and I can rub them together. Which people will that, say that rich yes. person sound. That rich person sound of coins rubbing together. Yes. Oh, we've finally made it. Oh, yes. <laughs> to the boat we, we shall follow. For England, for Queen Elizabeth. And for our wealth, of course. Cut to a Spanish port. I've got a bad feeling about this. Oh, Juan, I feel like there is something in the air today. I feel like it is, uh, oh, a sailor's, uh, what is a red dawn at the morn, uh, sailors be warned. It's, mm -hmm. it's the, I didn't wake up this morning early enough, but I get that feeling that it's one of those days. You don't need the words to describe it. A sailor, we have the intuition. It is in you. Mm. We see, like, this is not something bad is coming. Mm. Even though we are such a beautiful, powerful armada, I feel the world will not let it stand. They cannot stand things of beauty. No, or, or a great, great historical machismo. Right. Did someone say machismo? Oh, oh. we did. Roberto, it is your king. <gasps> Philip. Oh. Philip. Oh, you don't even look like the second anymore. Your machismo is so grand. Oh, Philippa. Yes. Oh, thank you for gracing us with your mighty visage. King Philippe, if you would permit me a question. We feel in our gut this intuition, the sailor's intuition, that something is amiss. What is the matter, my lord? There is nothing the matter. You will strike. <gasps> 
spear into the heart of England and yes. that red-haired woman up there on the throne. We will not fail you. There is a reason you are a king. Yes. Yes. You inherited the throne. And we respect <laughs> that here. Uh, quick, quick question, uh, king. Our, our armada is great. Our country is great. Um, there is great danger, however, in going uh, uh, to war. So, uh, what is, how do I say this right? Um, in it for the uh, common sailors. Yes. I was, um, three coins sound. <gasps> three coins? Three coins? No. See. Si. Oh, no, those three, three, three coins? Oh, no, those three, yeah. I don't even know what to do with three coins. I, I hear you tell with two, you rub them together, but with three, I don't know what you do. You, do you juggle the three coins? Uh, you can do a coin game on the street. Uh, oh, I don't know. I can't imagine cups. such was. Cups. Put it uh, and maybe uh, make more coins. Do some gambling. Yes, you, you can represent the Holy Trinity. You can. Oh, yes. Uh, you can flip three coins at the same time and experiment with mathematical probabilities that I can't even imagine as someone who's uneducated. I cannot imagine. All <laughs> I think of is maybe that pilgrimage. We could pay for all of the inns, all of the way. Wow. And have as many drinks of Rio Tinto as you want. What a dream. That's magnificent. Mm. King Philip, we love you. We are in. This is the glory that you have waiting on your return. Now go! To the Armada! Cut to the bridge of Sir Francis Drake's ship. Milady, all of our late night planning has come to fruition. Uh, we snuck upon our enemy, the Spanish Armada. I've already started using their accent. I will be a great noble in their country by the time we are done this war. Oh my lord, it is amazing. It is like you're a totally different man and I'm into it. <laughs> Even though, I mean, I, I I love you, your original self, but like just seeing that you have so much dimension, so many different sides to you, I mean, it's it's real appealing. Well, well thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. That uh, means a lot. Oh. Coming from... Uh, such a beautiful lady and such a learned woman. That's very surprising. A, a woman was so learned. Oh, gosh. Well, thank you. You know, I just pick things up for, like, osmosis. Like, I'll just go walk down the street, you know, just carrying a basket of flowers. And, and people talk around me, and I just absorb everything they say, you know. <laughs> that sounds dangerous. You might want to curb that. Yes, maybe so. But, you know, now I'm with you, mm. and you're going to be my protector. So yes, I don't have anything to worry about. Thank you so much for respecting my womanly boundaries. I am a gentleman, <laughs> if nothing else. Captain Drake, Captain Drake. Yes, what is it? The armada is within sight, sir. You may want the young lady to go under decks. Yes, time to go below decks where the, the women belong when the men have to spring forth into action. Well, Sir Francis Drake, there's... There's something I've been meaning to tell you. What's that, love? She rips off her wig. Oh my god! What the <laughs> blimey! She rips off her dress to reveal a peg leg. Oh, that's so horrid! Uh, uh, governor? Governor? Well, I got to tell you, I'm... <laughs> I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier and I am here to the end to defend Britain. That, that does explain a lot. This guy's that I've had to take on, it was so that way he convinced you to take on the Armada. And look at you, sir. You are the picture of a modern Major General. And let me tell you something, you might not know this, this leg right here, it's a hell of a club. So yes, sir, I won't be your lady tonight, but I will be your loyal soldier. I uh, must say I am rather disappointed. I should, normally I'd have you flogged for such insolence, but... God damn it, I admire your courage and your verve. To war we go. Lash the sails to the mizzens. Uh, the forecast uh, is uh, cloudy. Uh, <laughs> the forecastle, however, uh, get up upon that and let's get on them. Cut to the deck of the lead armada ship. Oh my god, look at them, they're, they're vicious. That little boy is holding his leg in his hand. 
Ugh. Is there anything they will not do? It's so repulsive. We should fight them. We have no choice. For we Espana. Have no choice for Espana, for, for King Philip, and for our futures as big ballers. Yes. <laughs> Cut back to Sir Francis Drake's ship. Sir, sir, the lead Spanish Armada ship is approaching soon. We should be colliding with it at any moment here. Excellent. But bring out the guns. We'll go right alongside and hammer them. Show them our British grit. Show them our efficiency and our wit. Well, it'll be tougher than the last part, but the efficiency and the, the grit. Let's go with that. And we could use the peg leg lad. Of course. Oi, of course I'm here. I'm here to the end. I'm ready. I feel you should be the first to board the flagship of the Spanish Armada and club everyone in my way. But I can also be a very enticing southern belle, as you know. Mm -hmm. I can put on that character and entice them in. And then you work your magic. Yes, sir. Captain, we are launching the planks across to the Spanish ship. Oh, oh my goodness. I, I just feel like I'm just going to fall right into this water. It's so scary. Oh, sir, will you help me across? Oh, yes, of course. Oh, what a lovely, strong, large hand for a lady, but oh, oh. so beautiful. Oh, thank you. You know, where I come from, the women in my family, our red hair just flows out of our head like, like waves, you know? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh. I am getting very excited for uh, our acquaintance. Wonderful. Well, listen, I thank you for letting me on board. I just thought we could talk about this little military matter a little bit, you know. Are you, you're not the captain of this ship. No, no. Well, you know what, though? You should be. Mm. <laughs> you could be. You mm. could be the captain of this ship with a wonderful woman like me by your side. You should gather the other men around me, and I can tell them... All about myself and the lands I come from. And Juan, then we can... Carlos! Yes. Come! And, guys, listen. Gentlemen. Oh, you're so brave and handsome. Why are you following some captain to just do doing whatever he says? That's ridiculous. You guys should commandeer this ship and just skedaddle right out of here. Uh, we got the, uh, three coins. That seemed like a lot. Three coins is a lot. Well... I heard that there's a whole lot of buried treasure just over yonder. Let's just take this boat and go over yonder together. Why are we going to go through all this violence? That's just men business. Don't you want to be around women? I also Ooh. heard there's a lot of women on that island. Ooh. Ah, las mujeres. Bonita. Is it a treasure island? Yes, it's a treasure island. Ooh. And the women keep it safe. And they... Okay, all right. I'm just going to spill all my secrets <laughs> to y'all because y'all are just so handsome. Okay, so this treasure island that's just over there, um, there's just it's, it's just full of beautiful women. And um, any kind you like. I mean, tall, short, you know, a little curvier, a little thinner, but lots of redheads like me, I must say. <laughs> and uh, yes, they got a treasure, but and, and I do come on out on to sea sometimes and I bring men back because let's be honest we're just so hopeless without all y'all men we need y'all on our island this is a great plan I could make this work I mean all you have to do is overthrow the captain it just could not be easier who could have all of the gold and all of the women oh my goodness oh, you get it you yes. get it let's, to the captain's quarters <laughs> <laughs> got to the captain's quarters what is this interruption? We, we have talked to a beautiful uh, red-headed maiden, and uh, I'm sorry, but you must die. <laughs> Cut to the beach on a treasure island. Ay, ay, ay! You are so pretty with your large hands, but beautiful red hair and so much powder on your face. It's beautiful. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm just looking around for, I don't know where my friends are. Just give me a moment. Uh, let me look a bit. Okay. She rips off her wig, rips off her skirt. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Takes off her peg lick. Oh, governor, you messed with the wrong woman today. Oh. For England. No. <laughs> the empire is no more. <laughs> The Diablo. 
<laughs> I said the end. Is that it? <laughs> oh, okay. oh, I didn't yeah, hear yeah. you. I'm sorry, sorry. Yeah, that is how <laughs> the Spanish Armada got defeated. That's <laughs> uh, well known. Yeah, I think uh, I think we're on solid ground with this one. Yeah. Yeah, I am feeling more confident about this one than anything else before mm-hmm, this. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's saying something. I bet. Mm-hmm. Thanks so much. That was really good. That was a blast. Yes. Yeah, I loved all your characters. And yeah, like cross dressing. Yeah. Well, thanks, Sarah. This was a lot of fun, and uh, we'd love to have you back for another go sometime. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was really fun. And we'll be back with Matt Roberto after this break. <laughs> Welcome back, Matt Roberto. Matt Roberto. He's 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 in residency. Yes. <laughs> at this point. <laughs> All-star returnee. Well, uh, thank thank you guys very much for having me back. This is this is a really fun experience. I'm enjoying it quite a bit. And uh it's it's really um really relaxing for me to to just uh talk about history and all these events that I'm excited about. You got a, a couple of geeks at the pub just listening to every word. Can't wait to hear the next explanation. <laughs> then what happened? Yeah, you, you'd, be, you'd be like, okay, I got, I got to go, guys. No, 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 no. I'll get you a Guinness if you just explain this last part of the event. <laughs> exactly. All right, let's get into it. So Steve was more confident than in any other episode that we got everything right in our improv set depicting the defeat of the Spanish Armada by England's navy in 1588. But what I want to know is where they put the statue honoring England's drag queen hero. (laughs) I I was thinking when I heard this episode, I was ready for a 12-part series um, either by Netflix or Amazon Prime to go into all these characters that uh, was a lot more exciting to the buildup than than I I ever dreamed. Uh, But yeah, it it was, I I couldn't tell you where that, that would be at. I don't know. (laughs) Hopefully, hopefully he looks just like Sarah. That would be (laughs) poetic. (laughs) At the peg leg and all. So yes, yes. Yeah. So why did Queen Elizabeth I want the English to attack the Spanish Armada? Um, Really, it was, it was Spain trying to invade England and to, uh, Absurd her power and the throne and then reestablish King Philip II as the king of England. He he was there uh, married to her sister. And then that was relinquished when she uh, took the throne after her sister's death. And the pope is involved, too, because they're trying to get the Catholic Church reinstated in England because they'd had it for a short period of time as as England, as Europe is really um just on this this fertile ground of religion and all the destruction it's causing as people are pulling away, which deals with economics. It deals with the fact that the Catholic Church is losing a lot of power and the Pope and the and the bishops and and kings too and princes, especially when Germany and the different princes break away. Can you set the stage for us? How has Spain amassed so much power at this point? When I'm teaching it in class, we we begin actually with the Portuguese exploration, um, the fall of Constantinople, because the trade routes are going to go through the Ottoman Turks now, and they have control of the Mediterranean, and so do the Venetians. And so it's really fascinating. So Spain is is following what Portugal's doing, and there's a lot of interaction, and you you have the rise of Spain, which really is Columbus discovering the Americas for the Spanish Empire and the conquest of the Americas uh, in the in the 30 years preceding his uh, his entrance into the 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 Caribbean. And Spain just jumps ahead of everybody. Um, And now the trade routes of Africa are obsolete and Spain is growing in power. And then it's just game on. It's just this acceleration of conquest and and uh, that's just the building of the Armada. And they really flex that power and they begin to expand their empire all over the world. You you have all these Spanish explorers exploring con- conquistadors, the age of the conquistador. They conquer Mexico, South America. And then in the, in the 1560s, they return to the Philippines after Magellan finds it for Spain and they conquer that. And they've just made an entire empire that's gone global. And now the empires are traveling over the oceans as opposed to on land. 
Philip inherits the throne of Spain and he he inherits the uh, the Holy Roman Empire, which Austria is just massive with the Habsburg family. So he's part of that. And then everything you see, Mexico, all the way up to where we are right here in California, um, uh, it's all under his control. Philip is actually not too engaged in warfare and and like this all conquering king, which is so fascinating. The biggest thing for Philip and a lot of the Spanish is, is controlling Spain. And you have a very, very orthodox form of Catholicism there at that time because you got so much of what they're focused on is the the Protestant uh, Reformation uh, and the fact that you, they're, they can't stop the spread of, of the Protestants and now the Church of England and then the Presbyterians. So this becomes a big issue for for his kind of focus on things. So I just want to know, how does Prince Philip have control of the Habsburg Empire? Through the bloodline. He is anointed the kingship by Charles V. And he will, because Charles V is going to retire and, and he is the king of Portugal. So when he gets the throne of Spain, now he's got the entire Spanish empire and the entire Portuguese empire. Plus he's the Holy Roman Emperor of Austria. And so it's like he inherits all this. And then at the same time, that this is happening. The conquistadors are still conquering. They're still, uh, you know, they, they out in the Philippines by the 1560s, they've conquered that area. So they're really expanding their empire globally around the world. And no longer is it about warfare and these big, massive armies on land trying to take and create an empire. It's about controlling the seas because it's about controlling trade and commerce. And they can get a lot of products that the people want um across the atlantic much faster than going by land and so yeah he's he inherits all of this and i think they, they're really much more into the the church and its power and having people in the catholic church and that being the the predominant religion there's not a lot of tolerance at all and so um all of a sudden in in um Wittenberg, you got this little monk challenging the Catholic Church, Martin Luther, and this takes a real left turn. And and the, one of the little secrets in this whole thing, and it, and it should leak in there, is the invention of the printing press, because that was the iPhone of its day. And and the, it's just the the information that, that travels and and people getting it and and the acceleration of learning with the printing press is so overlooked in this whole thing. And there's no I honestly think there's no uh, uh Protestant Reformation without this. I mean, all these things happen for a reason. There, there's just bigger forces out there at that time. And suddenly we have the Protestant uh, Revolution. And uh, then you have a king that wants a divorce in England and a male heir. And things get really interesting at that point. And so uh, you've got all these stories that are developing prior to 1588. And Elizabeth uh, was never meant to be the, the one on the throne, but she is. I'm starting to feel like this isn't actual. Is this really history? You're just explaining the plot <laughs> of a telenovela. <laughs> this is really it. This is it. Uh, okay. All right. It's just half sister stuff and uh, all this family intrigues. I'm like, what's happening? Is Matt pranking me? <laughs> I think if, if this was a series, this would be like, like a, like a game of Thrones. There's so many stories coming together or, or, a. Uh, the Marvel series with Endgame, it's all these threads and stories coming together. And it really comes to this, this tipping point of Spain trying to take the throne from England and then England ultimately putting up this giant upset on them. Now, at this point, is this what also kind of kicks off the British Empire, so to speak, too? Because uh, Elizabeth was the queen of England, not mm -hmm. the British Empire, because the British Empire didn't exist yet, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You also are getting that age of exploration, uh, which is happening for England. And they're also raiding Spanish ships. They're, they've got great pirates there like Sir Francis Drake, who's got a lot of experience in this. And, and he really is ticking off the Spanish. He's involved in circumnavigating. He's he, he's really good in, in warfare. Drake obviously is is all around. I mean, he is up and down the coasts, uh, uh, definitely very involved. And the thing about the English, too, is they're not just exploring, but they're setting up 
uh, what are going to be future businesses in areas that are not where Spain's at. The English are trying to settle the eastern part. Spain's really settling the west. The English, are they the only thorn in the Spanish Empire side in Europe? In that, I know the Turks are on the other side, but is this like... I, I, I'm interested to know they stood alone kind of thing. Like the French aren't involved in this event, right? This is just after the fact. Like No, but the Dutch are, which is really interesting. The Dutch, yes. Yeah, sorry, I always forget the Dutch. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they, uh, they're, they're definitely involved because the Spanish are trying to maintain control of the Holy Roman Empire in the Netherlands. And so there are Dutch rebels. And actually, they foil. Uh, the Spanish plans in this invasion by attack. There's a Spanish legion waiting for the Armada uh, in Dunkirk, another famous place. And they are they are um, surprised by the Dutch, by the rebels. And it's a little ploy that Elizabeth does. And she turns out to be pretty clever and the people working for her. And uh, it, you guys did a good example of that with um, uh, <laughs> with her and her status. But uh, I, I know she had a massive crush on Sir Walter Raleigh and not so much her cousin. <laughs> Who doesn't? I mean, it's Sir Walter Raleigh. They're still making bikes. <laughs> right. Yeah. What's not to love? <laughs> so was that the battle itself was not in the Bay of Biscayne, I'm assuming, as uh, <laughs> the prop set. Yeah. It's plan was, this, but where was this it? This battle is going to take place along. It's going to take place right outside of Spain, along the coast of France. Eventually, it's going to your, your big engagement will be. They'll say August seventh and eighth around the English Channel, and then it extends past that, and that's when the Spain is going to go past the English Channel northward, north of Scotland. Um, so yeah, it's going to. If you draw, you were to draw a line, you'd have it like south of france all the way up to the channel through the northern area past scotland and you're going to keep going uh east of of ireland and then and then, and then people differ between nineteen thousand to twenty five thousand troops it was going to be a full invasion and so when they go to invade um they bring these massive ships and it takes some time and the one thing that um, this English have is they have smaller ships that move faster. They can get further away from the opponent. They can sink the ship as opposed to engaging it. And, and they have longer guns and they've been investing in their Navy and taking time. And it's kind of like, there's a lot of intimidation for the English. And this is kind of where the cool part is when Drake comes in there as second in command he really just knows how to maneuver, maneuver those boats and get guys to get going and, and fire and know exactly where to fire their boats and all these clever tactics they use that are so outside of what the Spanish are used to. What the Spanish want to do is they want to get onto the boats, they want to raid them, and they want to uh, board them and take them over. And now warfare changes in this where you're using cannons to like destroy the ships from longer distances. And that's what the English have that's so great. Uh, in their in their victory, it sounds a lot like guerrilla warfare on the waves. Yeah, you know what I mean they're, they're using uh, sm quick attacks. Get in there, get out before the big guys can crush you, can board you. Yeah, you 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 engage, you you get you you do you cripple those those ships that can make landfall, and it just changed naval warfare for for a very long time. How does the English? get away with that you've got like the, the great power the spain generally with that kind of situation you also have you know the top military industrial complex is how we call it today but you know we, we they yeah. had to have the, the most advanced weaponry you know rome best weapons mm -hmm. generally empires best weapons but how did england actually have better cannon uh better evolved naval battle techniques i think one of the things that that doesn't get talked a lot about in this big battle because it's so significant is that yeah this was like when the longbow was created in the in the hundred years war you you all of a sudden the knight who's all armored up for years is, is obsolete because now it's just some guy can come in and pull the pull the arrow on the longbow and there goes this training of 20 years with this knight and he's gone so all these big battleships with these weapons and trained soldiers 
the English are, are, are thinking ahead here and saying, what if we just destroy and we're able to sink these ships as opposed to having to engage in battle? And another thing the English do that's very clever is when they go in and engage them, they're almost evenly matched as far as the amount of ships is just Spain is bigger. They have more firepower. Um, but they also use these things called fire ships and they go right. They send these these ships on fire and it catches the Spanish off guard. And they also have lost some commanders that were really good in the Battle of Lepanto. They lose those guys and they have some young guys that come in that are not as experienced. And uh, the momentum really goes England's way and they cannot gather their communication together. And instead of trying to regroup, they end up going around and sailing northward around Scotland, trying to gather themselves. And that's when a storm hits them and just decimates the Armada. What role did Lord Admiral Charles Howard actually play in England's victory over the Armada? We, we called him Lord Charles and I played him as a coward, but something tells me I'm way off on that. No, you, you, you're, you're not too way off. He was not, oh, excellent. Off. He was not very confident. And what makes this story so awesome is that it's kind of a baptism of fire for him. And when he goes in there, he starts taking charge and he's making decisions. But it really is Howard is his baptism by fire. It turns out to be he's pretty darn good. This is a big leap forward for naval warfare, it sounds like. Yeah, it is. I mean, from that, I mean, the, and, and what's so fascinating about this one, too, it, it's the beginning of of England's legendary have not been conquered since with William the Conqueror. And I believe in the beginning of your episode, which was so awesome, you brought up Trafalgar, which is my absolute favorite. And and for me, that cannot be. Taught. And by the time I'm done teaching it in history, it's like. It's like, look, I, I know I was born and raised in the United States, Midway, but to me, Trafalgar is like the creme de la creme. This really is like, OK, this is the proto Trafalgar. This is the beginning. Like, this is what naval warfare is going to be. It's going to be who can operate, who can sink the ships. Um, <clears throat> and, and, and just the Brit Britain at this point just accelerates to legendary status that they're going to have and how warfare is going to be conducted on the open seas. And then what's really fascinating is France is going to get involved in this and they're going to have their own incredible stories too. That sounds like a whole new chapter. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm, I'm worried because <laughs> I think that that'll be fascinating, but <laughs> we're closing the bar down. <laughs> I'm like, Oh, this is like the next episode of the novella. You just put a little cliffhanger and then the French. Game. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. So we know in the long term what happened uh, to Spain and its colonial aspirations and its global power aspirations. Uh, was there much domestic fallout when the Armada was crushed? Was it just like, ah, or was it, hey, this this uh, leadership we got here, this king, you know, all the money in the world and you still can't beat this little upstart? Spain will actually try to invade again in 1596 and they'll be, they'll, the, Howard will be much more experienced and they'll defeat Spain and, and Spain is never going to regain what they once had. They lose so much in this, this defeat. Like looking back, you're thinking, okay, Spain is still the, the power. They're just super loaded with money and they've just got their butts kicked and you would think, okay, uh, now we see how they did it. We're going to adopt those military tactics we're going to develop those type cannons and next time they're not going to do that so when they come back in 1596 i'm surprised that they're not ready for the you know it's not like the uh the little known um boxer that surprises the heavyweight champion yeah i think i think at the time that they they're rebuilding their navy and trying to adapt there's also a lot of other things going on in spain and one of them is the spanish inquisition is really at a point where it's destroying the middle class of Spain and Spain is going to go into a massive, which is so crazy because they had so much money from the conquest of the Americas, but they go into a massive economic depression too. And so a lot of this is going to just start to really compile on the empire. That's just one side because they also have in Austria, they've got the Turks coming in. So is it not, is it kind of one of those situations where, oh, that's a big loss, but we're such a huge power. They have to, they they have a global empire. It's about controlling the seas at this point because you can get product from uh, the, the quote unquote new world 
in New Spain uh, to Europe and other places so much faster by using water as opposed to the Silk Road. And, and the Trans-Saharan trade route is going to go dry. But it was a massive trade route through Africa that gave rise to the great golden ages in Africa. And that trade route is going to dry up. And Spain has control of that. And they're trying to keep control and the the different dramatic events that happen in in New Granada, in uh, what we call today Colombia, and uh, in Mexico, keeping control of that. And then you're going to get the missions and the Jesuits and the counter-reformation. So they really are involved in a lot of other things outside of this. It's kind of like this battle happens and there is a... a, a it will be the beginning and end of Spain, but nobody knows that yet. That's us just looking at hindsight and going back 400 years ago. Oh, yeah, this this was the point. This was the point where Spain will start to descend. But after this battle, they're still very much a world power. They're right there, um, but they just don't know it yet. That from this point on, they're going to start descending and, and Britain's going to start to rise up. And then France is going to come into this thing later, too. So, yeah, this this battle has a lot. to. It just is that center point in history where things change towards the British Empire for the next, oh, boy, 350 years. And Spain starts to decline in that time. You've alluded to how uh, the next 350 years, England becomes uh, the maritime power in the world, right? Yeah. Is yeah. That, that's that, that's all jump-started would that be the right word by this event yeah it's going to solidify elizabeth um because the other thing they're going to get is they're going to get the ability to move all the troublemakers and other protestant uh uh protestant citizens and they can move them to the colonies to develop businesses and that's the idea and that's what people like raleigh and um, drake we're interested in, we're developing these businesses for wealthy people in England, and they can get immigrants over there who aren't going through the persecutions that are happening in England over the Church of England and the Catholic Church and the Parliament. So it really enables her to move them out of England, the the troublemaker, so to speak. But that's there's a little mythology in that because a lot of it, they do look as investing and creating a colony that produces wealth. As they look at Spain, Spain's taken all the gold and that's gone. But what's there is businesses that are made. And obviously that goes into the brutality of, of things like slavery and the encomienda system. And the, um, the English are going to use uh, the, the immigrants to go in there who want religious freedom and to get away from persecution. And, and they're going to go in to develop businesses like the Pilgrims will later, Jamestown. So it really opens that up. And it's no mistake that your first successful settlement is going to be in 1607, followed by the Pilgrims in 1620. And then you're just going to keep getting more and more and more groups going over there. And in return, domestically, that solidifies Elizabeth's hold on England until her death. And uh, at that point, Britain's going to invest a lot in its maritime uh, power and abilities and and innovations and uh they really make a big push in the war of spanish succession 120 years later i mean you touched on five continents and it is truly this is truly a global event i mean this mm -hmm. like this is it's crazy yeah yeah it's a lot going on um it's really interesting you know i i think for a lot of us uh Maybe it's our generation. I, I don't know. But and I still see it with younger kids that I teach like World War Two is the gateway drug to history. I think I brought that up before. But it's like when we really start to look back at these things, I think what makes World War Two so accessible is that you have videos, you have movies, you have all these things that 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 gravitate to kids pretty quick. And I mean, it's so there's so much of it, but we don't have a lot of that for these older events. And, it, and when you think about it, yeah, it is so epic it really is okay. it's really cool thank you so much matt another fascinating interview with you you bring it all around tour de force yes now I, I you know i have fun and i know people will uh hopefully uh, if anything i hope i get them excited about the same stuff i'm excited about i i love this stuff and um yeah, and I, and I just anything that's historical that has events that i can see and i can appreciate and 
And I, I just think it's really interesting. And I think there's a lot of um, there's a lot of exciting stories there, and and they are stories, and and uh, there's a lot of different interpretations of them, and and we're living through a lot of stuff right now that's that's got its roots all the way back to other parts of uh, history in the world and in the United States for us, and so this stuff is always fun. Well, uh, we add ours to those many interpretations. Yes, but I enjoy those. <laughs> I enjoy <laughs> scenes happening in bars, spies, uh, exploding ships, uh, wigs coming off. I mean, that's fun stuff. In a dystopian world of the future, or <laughs> maybe, maybe a few bunkers right now, this is the version of the defeat of the Spanish Armada. <laughs> that takes way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like that. We're all into, uh, you know, alternate earths right now. I think that's, uh, it may be getting a little old for Hollywood, but I'm always good for that. So, yeah. <laughs> nice. All righty. Thanks again. Oh, you guys are welcome. And that was History improv And that was a huge event. That was one of the biggest we've had so far. And we had crossing the Rubicon, so it's not like we only do small events. You you want long range impact? Call Matt. Matt's our guy. And much like our discussion about the Rubicon, there was so much more that we talked about that we didn't have in the episode because it's just so far reaching and it's so easy for us geeks to just kind of keep going mm-hmm. that the the scope goes well beyond what you heard. Yeah. I found it really interesting when Matt got into the military tactics and the ships, how much faster they were, the cannon were longer. Mm-hmm. But there's one other factor he didn't mention that I thought was really um, important, which was those cannon the English had were also much quicker to reload. Mm. So it makes me think like the Spanish must have had so little confidence or so little impressed by cannon i just can't imagine how is that possible like if you don't even have to go on board you just sink the other ship from a distance like that's that's got to be a win (laughs) (laughs) right i I find that really surprising though like because you know they're not dumb well or, or or it's complacency maybe that's it maybe they were so superior in all the battles they fought in the past that they're just like, yeah, we'll we'll win. It's no problem. Yeah, much like much like Rocky at the beginning of Rocky Three, you know, <laughs> getting all getting all lazy and draping himself in fur coats and stuff. We didn't talk a lot about what we got right, but I, I, I did feel validated in that because Philip was a wealthy king that he could, you know, hey, three coins. Three coins versus two coins. Obviously, the economics works in Spain's favor. Exactly. It's 50% more wealth in Spain. That's clear from our improv set. But I kept thinking how much of the Americas would be speaking Spanish now. So in, in the United States, instead of it being 50% Spanish now, it would be maybe 90% Spanish. With a little Portuguese thrown in. Yeah. Don't check those numbers. <laughs> I have no idea how many Spanish people. I live in Houston, so there's a lot, a lot of Spanish speakers in Houston. Well, and then quite a few where I live too. In the end, perhaps the Spanish will become the global power just through like population growth instead of conquering. Yeah, do it the peaceful way by reproducing. Yeah, reproducing is way more fun than war. So, dear listener, sangria or a pint of ale? Which do you prefer? Let us know at hello at historyimprov.com. And if you like this episode, please share it with someone you think might enjoy it. And please subscribe, rate, and review the show. And to find out more about us, check out our website, historyimprov.com. Should I say how it's spelled, Trent? Historyimprov.com. That's right. So check us out. We're on YouTube or wherever fine podcasts are downloaded. And don't forget, take a historical audio tour. I like to think that each episode of History Improv is a historical audio tour. This is true. I know we won't be adding any of this stuff. Yeah. With a a sharp beginning.
A sharp, a what? And if you like what you heard today, no. that, uh, ahora, todos al mundo, disfruta. That might even be right.